So let's have a conversation about embracing your bougie, okay? So I was recalling recently when I was about 16 or 17 years old, my cousin said to me on multiple occasions, actually, that I was high maintenance. And she didn't necessarily say it in a negative way, you know, but I, for whatever reason, internalized it to be negative in the sense that I didn't want to associate myself with anything that made me seem bougie or seem high maintenance. And so I spent the next 20 years of my life trying not to be perceived as high maintenance or bougie. And of course, life teaches you what it teaches you. And throughout my experience, I have now grown to embrace my bougie, embrace my high maintenance, so to speak. So I've always been into hair. I've always been into nails. I didn't really start getting into makeup until I was in college. And I still didn't really know what I was doing because that was pre- YouTube days to where you could just get on YouTube and watch a bunch of beauty influencers and know which products to go and get. So I really didn't start getting into makeup like for real, for real until I was like real grown. And I always have cared about keeping myself up. You know, I always have lived by the philosophy that when you look good, you feel good. And I just wholeheartedly believe that to be true. So you know, I learned how to do my own hair. I learned how to do my own nails. And when I say that, I'm talking about when I was younger, like 16, 17 years old, because my mother couldn't afford to send me to the salon every week or every other week. So I had to be creative. And so I learned to do my own hair, my own nails, because I just really always wanted to feel beautiful. So back to this whole high maintenance thing and how I took it to mean something negative, even though my cousin did not mean it in that way, I spent the next 20 years trying to hide myself, trying to hide my love for looking good and my love for luxury things. And um, it reflected a lot in my relationships because then I didn't want to choose a man based off of what he had or what he could do for me because I felt that to be, you know, a negative thing. And so I kind of moved into the space of like, oh, you know, well, we can build together and we can, you know, do this thing together, right? <laughs> Until I tried that, you know, probably a few times. And you know what I learned is that men, they don't respect a woman that they have to like build with you know what i'm saying like a man's nature is to protect and provide a man wants to provide for you and if he cannot provide for you he's mean he's not even a, a nice person to you because you are a constant reminder to him of what he doesn't have and what he cannot do for you so instead of it being like oh yeah we can build together it's really like, you know what? I actually really hate you or I really don't like you because you require this and I can't give this to you. So it, yeah, I really don't like you that much. And so they be mean and shit. So in this season of my life, I have gone back to that person that I was, which is, I mean, if you want to call it high maintenance then call it high maintenance or bougie or whatever, I just call it having standards and not lowering those standards just because you have come across some people who can't meet those standards. Now I just understand that if people can't meet your standards and, and I'm saying meet your standards in that way, because I don't necessarily believe in somebody meeting your standards. I think that there are people who are just on your frequency and people who are not on your frequency and that you should only really associate yourself, especially being in a relationship or partnership with somebody who is also on your frequency, you know? So the man that's on my frequency is a man who also likes to take care of himself 
and he wants to provide for his woman in particular. He wants to provide for me. And of course, I work, I make my own money. I do, you know, all of those things because of how I like to live my life, you know. And so you do have to find somebody, not find somebody, just attract somebody who is on that same frequency and that energy level that you are on or else you're going to be constantly trying to bring this person up to your frequency and that's exhausting because you don't have time to do that you know it's better and easier to just find somebody who is already on your frequency or attract somebody who's already on your frequency your frequency why am i having a hard time saying frequency what is going on with me um, than trying to convince somebody that they should be on your frequency because or else they're going to try to bring you down to their frequency or their level. If they aren't high maintenance or they don't, you know, believe in living a life of freedom and luxury, they're going to try to convince you that you shouldn't either, that you shouldn't like that. And I remember when I bought my first um, Infinity. I was so shy and embarrassed. I didn't even want anybody to see my car. I mean, I remember saying to my sister, like, oh, yeah, I'm like, it's not, you know, a big deal. Like, it's just low key, low key luxury. Like, I intentionally went out and got a car that I thought or felt was like low key, you know, luxury, like not a, a big deal. Right. <laughs> like, You know, like I knew that I didn't want a a Benz because I just always have felt like Benz is just like so kind of flashy you know what I'm saying and if you're not leaving the lot with the best Benz like the best the most luxurious version of a Benz then you just get in a Benz because you think that's what it you think that that's what luxury symbolizes now don't come for me my Benz owners you know what I'm saying I, I still think that the Benz is fly you know but you know, if it ain't the G wagon or what's some of the other models, I'm not all that familiar with the Benz models, you know. But if it ain't like no two two door, you know, coupe with the drop top, or it's like you kind of just want people to think you got money, and I and I like don't want people to think I have money. I would just rather have money <laughs> than for people to think I got money. That I really don't care about. Don't come for me. Don't come for me. Okay. I just, I've always, just always felt that way. I don't know. So that has always kind of turned me off from buying a Benz. That's not to say that I won't ever have one, but you know, I let my man buy me a Benz, right? Because I deserve a man who can afford to buy me a Benz, you know, and I am worthy and deserving of a man who wants to care for me in that way and buy me a Benz, you know? And again, I think that at this stage of my life, I'm just at a place where I'm like, if it's not what I want, if it's not the type of partner or person that I want that suits me and suits my my lifestyle, then I am absolutely okay with being, with being single. And I know that that Gabrielle Union interview is going viral now where she was talking about how her and Dwayne Wade, they split the bills and how she still like worries about money, not necessarily because she has to worry about money, but because she is conditioned to, you know, worry about money. And I say that since I've decided to embrace my bougie and embrace my sort of high maintenance life that I've always loved to live, because even when I was 16 and 17 years old, you know, I was really big on that. That was before somebody told me that I was high maintenance. You know, I thought that like everybody liked to look good and keep their hair done and their nails done and, you know, learn how to groom themselves in a way that makes them feel good. Like I thought everybody did that. So I felt, I guess I felt a little called out. <laughs> like I'm high maintenance. Like really? Like everybody doesn't like to look like they are a celebrity or worth a million dollars. Like not everybody likes to look that way. <laughs> and like I said, I worked really hard to lower my standards <laughs> after that. Right. 
crazy. I worked really hard to lower my standards after that because I just did not want to be viewed as the bougie girl, the high maintenance girl. Um, and of course, I came from a impoverished family in an impoverished neighborhood and you know and being flashy was like never my thing because again I don't find it necessary to try to show people that you have money I again I would just rather have money I don't want I don't want nobody to think I got money because I ain't giving nobody no money so I don't want you to even think I got no money. <laughs> you feel me so I'm just saying like um embrace your bougie you know, I settled in so many relationships and situationships because I didn't want to be viewed as bougie. But back to Gabrielle Union and the 50-50 thing. I used to, at first, when I was younger, I thought that men should take care of the household and provide for the household. I thought that. And then after I internalized this high-maintenance bougie thing... I let that standard slip away from me. And then, of course, then I was dating men who who also didn't believe that they should provide, you know. And I was like, oh, okay, but, you know, we can make it work and we can build together and we can. And then I'm like, I've experienced those type of men and they are not very nice. You know what I mean? They are not very nice. And it's a constant reminder like I said to them that they can't afford you. And so they don't like that. So they'll try to put you down or they'll try to have you lower your standards, you know, to meet their, to meet where they are financially or to just to make them feel masculine in some, in some way. And so, no, thank God, even though it took me some years, I've outgrown that side of myself to where I'm like, no, I'm embracing my bougie. I'm embracing my high maintenance. I will stay single for however long I have to stay single. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Until I attract a partner who believes also in these things around a man being a provider because I want to relax in my feminine. I don't want to be the masculine. I feel like I have been the masculine pretty much my entire life because I didn't know anything different. And so I also witnessed the women around me being in their masculine and not having men who were providing for them. And so I learned that that was normal. And now I'm like, at least in my world, that's not normal for me anymore. Because if I have to pay the bills, then I got to bend you over. And I don't want to be bending my man over. So I'm not paying any of the bills that has to do with the household at all. I mean, I don't even want to pay my bills. I want my money to be the money that I use or we use to, you know, kick it and have fun. And, you know, you still got to pay for travel, too. But, you know, I, I probably will pay for some other things. You know, you're going to get spoiled. You're going to get great gifts. You're going to, you know, get me. I'm such an enlightening person. You know, you get to have access to me all the time and masculine men. That's what they want in their woman. They want a feminine woman. They want a woman to be able to live her soft life so that she could just really just focus on, you know, him. Right. And I prefer to do that. And I'm always going to make my own money. Understand. I'm going to always make my own money because I like what money gives you. It gives you choices, options, freedom. So I like that. I'm going to always make my own money, but I am not, in the mood to be paying household bills when I have a man. If I'm paying household bills, that means I'm single. So I'm single. I'm very single right now because I'm paying all of my own household bills. And if you ever see my status change from single to in a relationship or married, then you know that I'm not paying any of my bills. I am embracing my bougie. I am embracing my feminine. I am embracing the soft life. I am embracing being high maintenance. I'm finally embracing it. And you know what? I love it. I really do. I love it over here. It's so 
free and so flexible. And I don't have to worry about, as Shira Seven says, Dusty's trying to talk to me because then they already know they can't afford me. And I, and I like it that way. I, I like it that way, right? So that we just don't get confused about where we stand with one another. By the way, I want to shout out this lady who makes this. Where is the top to this? I want to shout. I can't find a top to this. But I want to shout out this lady. This is um, Edge Control. It's called I Am Blessed Hands. I found her on IG. And this is the best edge control that I have ever used. Hands down. Her tutorials are amazing. She do her, her hair and she got like shorter hair. And she lay this on her edges and her hair and it don't even move. And she always showed that too. Like, and it's true. Like, it don't move. Actually, when I first started this video, this was before I had put some edge control on. Of course, I had on edge control from yesterday. And I actually didn't even need to put on more edge control because as you can see at the beginning of my video, I just went on ahead and did my own little swoops, right? Before I even put more on and it was cool. I just put a little bit more on so it could be super secure. So anyway, go support this sister. Um, not because she black, but because she has a quality product. So go support this sister because she has a quality product, right? And it was something else too that I wanted to share. Oh, I use primarily Juvia Place products on my face today. I use Juvia Place's blush, which man, this line of liquid blush that they just came out with is absolutely amazing, right? Go get some Juvia Place. I had ordered three things, the P. Louise blush, because when I see it, I always look like pigmented, the liquid blush, terrible, terrible. And I waited like three weeks for that product to come because they are in a UK, terrible blush. You, If you want it pigmented, you got to put so much on it, it, it. It's I don't like it. But this Juvia Places blush, I got three of the colors. I'm actually going to get pretty much the rest of their line. That blush is some of the most amazing blush that I've had outside of Estee Lauder. But Estee Lauder's blush is uh, powder and Juvia's Place uh, blush is liquid. That is the best. I also use Juvia Place's lip liner and their lip gloss. This color, I can't remember, but I got a bunch of theirs um, as well. I used Juvia Place's bronzer today. And this was my first time using their bronzer, which... A plus. I absolutely love it. I used their concealer and I used a new color today, which was absolutely perfect. The color was perfect. Um, so I am on well, my Juvia Place kick and my I Am Blessed Hands kick. The lashes that I have on today is Velour, which Velour has some of the best lashes in my opinion. However, they have not been selling their strip lashes as much in Ulta for whatever reason, but they do have another um, one that is their Velour lash kit and so these lashes this is just what's left of the lashes um but these are lashes that you put on uh put on under your lash so i'm gonna need to redo these probably tomorrow but i put these on sunday and it's wednesday and they've been holding up pretty well I love them actually i started to buy another pack of them yesterday and then i was like kristen you already got some so just use that first um so yes again back to embracing my bougie and embra embracing my high maintenance you know my man gotta be okay with me going to Ulta to spend five hundred dollars on makeup because i love makeup and i love hair and i love nails and that's just who i am and i promise to myself that i will never dumb myself down i will never lower my standards i will always continue to thrive to get better to improve to do what i need to do internally and externally for me to feel my best self. And that's where I'm at now. I feel my best self. And I am loving who I have become. And I am loving who I am becoming. So this is a shout out to all my bougie girls. my All my high maintenance girls. Keep your standards high. Right? And, and if someone challenges those standards, make them even higher. Make them even higher. 
because that just means that those are not your people. That just means that that's not the man for you. If that man can't afford you, that's just not the man for you. You don't have to backtrack, dumb yourself down, lower your standards to be with this man who can't afford you. And that's okay. Till next time, y'all.